I've got a, a, a dog and he's a cockapoo. For Christmas, he got this like orange chicken toy thing, which he loves, right? Squeaky thing. So, um, so I was going up to say what landing light wasn't on. So as I passed my bedroom, which was dark, right? Above my bed, I could see this chicken thing levitating. And I thought, oh no, not again, not again. Hello and welcome back to Tech Talks and Soul Walks with myself, Julie Kubiak. Now today, literally in the room, we have another Julie. This is Julie Evans from Earth Angels. It is, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one. Hi, <laughs> I don't everyone. Know, I don't know why I can never say it. But anyway, yes, welcome, Julie. So to give you a bit of background as to uh, Julie's background with soul and spirit and everything else, she's a psychic, she's a medium, she's an angelic healer. And she had her own episode. It was series two, episode eight of Help My House is Haunted. Thank you very much for that, because I can't read my notes off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so we're having a few technical problems here. <laughs> <laughs> technical problems, my brain's not working today either. Uh, so rather than me <laughs> rather than me actually try and remember everything that I've written down here even though we dictated it earlier. I'm going to hand you straight over to Julie and Julie can sort of give you a bit of background as to what her presence is today, what she's here to do and what she's here to talk about. So over to you, Julie. Well, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for listening and, and thank you, Julie, for having me. So basically what I do is, is I'm an angelic healer and I do also do psychic and mediumship. And for those of you who don't know the difference, psychic is stuff that you get on a life's level, things that are going on in your life now or causing ill health or, you know, mental health, distress, anxiety. That's your psychic readings. Mediumship is when you bring your loved ones through, yeah, and you're actually connecting to their consciousness or their spirit souls, whatever, however you, you know, you perceive it. So that's the difference between psychic and mediumship. So I do both, um, but just to be clear on this, it's like they're two different frequencies. So obviously with the healing and the psychic, I get the psychic stuff through the angels, God's archangels. So that is the highest frequency. So then if I want to connect with your loved ones, I then have to drop down a little bit in order for them to come through. Okay, so they're definitely two separate energies then. They yeah. don't blend. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's a completely different frequency. It's still the same love and light and the loving energy, mm -hmm. but it's a different frequency. It's a little bit like, to, you know, the old fashioned radios where you used to tune, you know, tune in the frequency. <laughs> so so that's that's how it, that, well, that's how I work. I mean, everyone works differently, mm -hmm. um, but that's how I work. So when did you realise that you had this gift then, Julie? Well, I was a bit of a late starter, but it was actually the circumstances as to why I was a late starter, because the house I lived in, the people who lived there before me had been conjuring and they were doing sort of satanic rituals and things like that. And it caused a portal in my home. Um, and bearing in mind, we're going back like 25 years when we didn't have all the technology we have today. There was none of these programs. You know, people, well, well they still poo-pooed spirit and mediums and do you know what I mean? Spiritual. Mm. I mean, it's different now with all the programs and everybody's awakening and everyone's having some sort of spiritual activity, aren't they? Yeah. You know, back then it was like, you're either mad, you're on drugs, you're drinking. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> they even took your children off you because they said you thought you were hearing voices. So, so, so back then anyway, so I moved into this house. It was a council house in the most beautiful cul-de-sac. And um, apart from this house, it looked like it'd been shot up in Beirut. It was like a spot the council house, right? But it was right next to my daughter's school, and she was only six at the time. And I just thought, you know, a bit of a clean up and lick of paint and some new furniture, it'll, it'll be fine. So I moved into this house not knowing that there was a portal. I didn't even know what a portal was. And for those of you who don't know what a portal is, it's like an opening. Um, where spirit or demons can come in and out of. So the demons weren't always present in the house, but when we moved in, my daughter was very, very spiritual. And uh, so, of course, it wanted her. So we started to have a lot of dark energy and things going on in the house. Well, light and dark can't mix. So I just started, before I moved in there, I just started to sense the healing stuff coming from me. 
But then that all stopped when we moved into this house. Uh -huh. And uh, to be honest, the church didn't really do much about it. Uh, they left me sort of single mom on her own with a six-year-old child to basically fend for myself. So we were, uh, for 20 odd years, we sort of lived with this darkness. And then I had the church in, I had a demonologist in, I had mediums in, and no one could clear it until Help My House Was Haunted coming in. It was hosted then by Chris Fleming. Mm -hmm. I mean, he doesn't host it now. Ian Lawman does it. It's still Barry and Jane, but it was Chris Fleming, and he's an American, very well known in America. Um, he is a man of God. He is, well, he's a warrior of God. And uh, as soon as he walked into my house, he picked up on it straight away. Straight away. So much so that when he came out, because we weren't allowed to meet him beforehand, when he came out of the house, he called a meeting because he was concerned for, you know, for the the staff and presenters and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, but so long story short, he did clear it. And also there was a dark energy that was attached to my daughter, which I didn't know. I didn't, didn't know that was even possible at that point. And, uh, and, and he cleared that away from her. And, and once all that darkness was gone, and the attachment of God from Jess, it was like all this love and light like filled the house. It was really strange. It was like the heating suddenly went on full blast. It just felt warm and lovely. And and that's when then I discovered I'd got my gifts mm -hmm. because now the darkness has gone. So I could now, you know, have my gifts. And the reason how I found out also was because obviously with what had gone on in the house, it's like, how do you protect your daughter, you know, your children from things you can't see? Mm -hmm. You know, do you bring the police? Do you, do you know what I mean? So, mm. so I started attending um, a spiritual church in order to try and find ways to protect my daughter from these forces. So and that's when also I developed then as a spiritualist and as a healer. Wow. That is probably got to be the best story of how somebody got into spiritualism yeah. and angels and everything else. <laughs> well, they always say, you know, at the end of the day, it's like you've got to, you, first off, to do what we do, you've got to know God. Mm. You can't do what we do and not know God. Yeah. Um, but also that's become part of my purpose and my soul's pathway mm. is to help people that are dealing with these negative energies. And the reason I can help them is because I've known them. Mm, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've known that darkness and I sense it straight away in people. And when I close my eyes and I put my hands on it and I go to my third eye, I can see it. And I can see the attachment if they've got attachments. Or I can see negative energies that are penetrating their aura. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So can I just ask then, when you knew that it was at the height and the television programme got involved, did you feel... Um, any different to as you do today? Oh, good God, yes. I am a completely different person mm -hmm. because it's like, this is what people don't, you know, apart from all the horror films and everything, it's not like that. It's very, very subtle and you don't know, you know, that you're being drawn in and do you know what I mean? It's like when things start flying around the room and restacking themselves in the centre of, you know, of, of the room. Do you know what I mean? You sort of like... That's not normal, Julie. Can I no. just say that is not normal? No, it's not. <laughs> but when it happens every day for 20 years, it becomes normal. Do you know what I mean? You start to normalise things. And then you start saying, oh, go on, can you do that again? Well, that's the worst thing you can do because now you're giving it instruction, you're interacting. That's giving it permission now. Mm. And things just went from bad to worse to physical attacks after that, like really bad mm. physical attacks after that. So did it happen? Well, not happen, but did it sort of creep up into your energy very gradually then? Yeah. At the first off, it was very, very subtle, like, you know, footsteps on the stairs. Mm -hmm. You know, you put your keys down, you've got to pick them up, they've gone. You know, little things like that. Mm. Because what it does is it wants to excite your fear. Mm. Because the dark energies that they feed off your fear, it's like giving them, you know, triple Duracell batteries. Do you know, no fear is, yeah. is an energy. So the, diff the, the lovely difference is now is they fear me. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Warrior for God. <laughs> yeah. So when it was slowly creeping up on you, and obviously you say it just became the norm then, 
how you were then. Did you feel low? Did you feel depressed? I'm trying to um, yeah. kind of like picture, because obviously I didn't know you back then, but how were you as a person to like the outside world? Oh God, it was a nightmare. Um, but first, like, right, first let me explain. Uh, everything's an energy and works on frequencies. So you've got the divine, which is obviously the highest. We as humans sit here in the middle and then you've got the lower energies, yeah? You're already, as a human, more powerful than the dark energies. Mm -hmm. And it can't do anything. God's law is, it's the same as above as it is below. Mm -hmm. Freedom of will and choice. And neither one can intervene without giving permission. You have to ask and give permission. So very often when people are praying, you know, they're going through a hard time and they're putting the prayers out there. You know, it says, oh, I don't believe in God. He's ain't listening anyway. You know, it's like, it's not that simple. You have to give him permission to intervene in your life. Then he can protect you. Then he can, you know, help you. Mm -hmm. All right. But it's the same works for that. And how the darkness works is, is if, you know, if you've got like paranoia or if you've, you know, you're feeling low, you stru suffer with stress, anxiety, depression, we all go through those stages, you know, everyone's got money worries of late, so that's like an instant anxiety and stress, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So as, as you start to get stressed, yeah, you start to go down, then your anxiety kicks in, then depression comes in, then you're not sleeping, so you're like, you get a bit irritable and nasty and sharp with people. Do you know what, and, until you are isolated, hate, jealousy, all these things are tools it can use, but it puts you down in them lower energies. Now you're in its domain and by acting upon that, you're giving it permission. Right. Yeah. So okay. you've invited, unknowingly, you've invited it in. Mm. Because your energy is low. And because you haven't given God permission, he can't protect you. Mm. You have to give him permission to intervene in your life. It's your freedom of will and choice. Mm. So with with it all being energy then, were you actually seeing these things? Were you sensing them? Were you hearing them? What were you act what was actually going on? Everything. Everything, okay. yeah. Because it was so powerful. But also it was it was so um it, well, it was so visual and it's like everybody who came to my house had experiences there. Things were regularly we'd be sitting chatting and things go like things go flying past. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing about it now, but trust me, it it was not, you know, we, we lived in terror. Mm -hmm. And it was like, every time I tried to save up to get out that house, you know, it was it just, I kept losing jobs and I've never lost a job in my life. You know, like, just through no fault of my own, I'd be made redundant. It just kept me, as I couldn't get the money to get out there. The council wouldn't, like, move me. Mm -hmm. People didn't believe me in the start off, because bearing in mind this was 25 years ago, yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, it was it was everything. And prior to that, you know, I wasn't I wasn't sensitive to humans, let alone ghosts. Do you know, what I, mean? you know I, mean, I just wasn't that girl. So when you say how have you changed, boy, have I changed? But the things I see and sense now are of God's love and light, and that has transformed my life like you wouldn't believe. And I gave. And here's the thing for any of you out there that is having these kind of activities, or we call it discernment, but what that means is negative, dark energies, and you feel like you're in a perpetual state of depression and anxiety and worry and things like that, yeah. And this is what the church don't tell you. And I, don't, and I add them in loads, right? Mm -hmm. And it's so simple. I choose God's love and light, yeah? Now you've made your choice loud and clear, now God can intervene and protect you and the dark can't come in because you've made your choice. Same as if you chose the dark, the light couldn't come in because you've made your choice. So whenever you're sensing anything that you, you, you know, your body will let you know that, oh, I don't like that. Yeah, just say, I choose God's love and light only. So for you then, if you're feeling or sensing negativity as opposed to high energy, what's the difference that you would feel in your body then? Well, it's the same as if you do with people. You know, sometimes you meet people and you think, I don't like you and I don't know why. You haven't mm. done anything wrong, but it's like your body's reacting to that energy, isn't it? Yeah, mm. yeah. It's very similar to that and a bit more intensified. So it's going to be different to each person then, but they could feel yeah. sick, they might feel shaky, they yeah. might feel... And also these negative energies, they're not all demons. Mm. 
Mm. You know, it can be sort of like if they were negative, not nice people on the earth, you know, there's a good chance that when they've passed over, they're, they're of similar energy and, you know, it's uh, they're not there to, for your best intent. Mm. So now then, and at kind of comparing it to as you were before, how is it now then when you would feel that something is positive? Well, first off, you see it, don't you? It's a feeling. Positivity is feeling. You feel mm. positive. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The world looks like a better place and, you know, you've got a bit of a spring in your step and, you know, you just love everything and you love everybody and <laughs> everything's great. You know, it's just... <laughs> yeah, so it's there's... a bit more subtle than that, but you get the point. Yeah, so there's a definite... You can kind of, like, draw almost like a knife through butter and say, definitely, that side is negativity. It's, you know, you're having bad things happen to you, um, bad thoughts, you know, you're not sleeping. Things are not going right. Yeah, well, so. basically, it's back to the frequency thing. And it's like, how do you raise your frequency? Mm. You know, so if you're feeling that, you know, that you're starting to feel a bit sort of, like, depressed or your anxiety's kicking in and things like that, how do you lift your energy? So... Put some music on, you know, music that you love, you know, and if you're bereaved and missing your loved ones, you know, because that, that brings down a, a low energy, doesn't it, you know? Sadness and, and depression and things like that. Look at the photos, look at the happy times and remember the happy times with that person. Not only then does your frequency automatically raise, very often the loved ones around you, you'll feel them because you've raised your frequency. Now they can, you know, they can now connect with you. When, you, when you're not very well or you're depressed or, you know, you've got stuff going on, you drop out. They're still there. They're around you, but you can't feel them because you've dropped out of frequency. So raise your frequency. Put your music on or, you know, do or go and have a nice candle. Bath. Whatever it is that floats your boat that makes you feel better and your frequency does that, bang. Perfect. Positivity. So you've got a course starting, haven't you, Julie? Second uh -huh. of July at Bedworth Spiritual Church. So this is for people that know that something is going on, as in they're feeling something. It's all positive. It's positive Beginners. changes. Yeah, so it's beginning's kind of course. How can they start start learning apart from going on your course? Well, we are um, doing it um, uh, so that you can subscribe and and, and join the course online but basically what it's about is as everyone's waking up spiritually waking up sensing things and it's um it's it's about protecting you and your family yeah because when you're opening up and you're left to your own devices both will come at you and until you make your choice you know you're going to experience both um but it also affects your family you know your loved ones your partner it can affect your relationship so it's about prevent and protect. Protect mm -hmm. yourself, protect your family, protect your loved ones and prevent that energy from affecting everybody, yeah? So, so any, oh, sorry, I was Jill. just going to say, if anybody's interested then, do they have to have any prior knowledge or no, anything No, else? no, no. So it is purely for beginners. Mm -hmm. And most people, you know, that come to me when I'm doing readings or healing or things like that, they themselves are starting to sense things. Some mm -hmm. people get it weird, keep getting visual dreams, deja vu, and then it happens. Or some people keep seeing repetitive numbers. Some people feel spirit or, you know. So it's just a feeling you'll know. So, so when you get to that point, that you're now really sensing, you need to know the basics. And the first thing you need to learn is how to, you know, make your choice and preventative, yeah, protection, mm. prevent. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So the course then, is it something that they have to go away and do homework? Will there be things like that to do? Or do they just turn up two hours and then switch off from it? Well, no, because it's like, you know, once you're spiritually awoken, that doesn't switch off, does it? Mm. So it's something that you can practice every day. And for those people who want to do more with it, it's all about your intention. You know, if you want to use your gift to help people. So in, in the course as well, again, it's very, very basic for beginners. We look at like spirit guides, power of prayer, meditation, feeling spirit, connecting to spirit. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Then, then the tools that you're given, like some people are drew to cards, some people are drew to crystals, ribbons. I mean, there's lots of tools in ways that help you focus and connect. Mm. Yeah. But always in safety. 
Yes, definitely. So the fact that it's giving you the basis for then learning more or seeing yeah. what time it's about also it's, got. it's about building building your relationship with your angels and your angel guides. A lot of people see colours. Well, mm. those colours are archangels, and they're associated with like on a life's level. So things that are going on in in your life, it can help you with that and give you information. And usually. It's, prayers that you've asked or thoughts you've put out there but also on a healing level so when I'm doing healing say for instance I get red well that would be Archangel Uriel and her domain is all around your stomach and your midriff your liver your kidneys your colon so on a healing level if I see red I know that person's got stomach problems or liver and kidney problems Mm -hmm. because they've all got their domains not one angel does everything so that would be the homework it's like get to know your angels get to know what they do what they're trying to information they're giving you and always you know you can't do this job and not know god oh. and so a lot of people go oh no no i ain't religious god don't believe in god i believe in the universe but i don't believe in god well <laughs> it's about your intention uh-huh. you know if you want to use your gifts to help someone that's really good intention that's love and light well we can work with that but you will anyway eventually if you know if you start working with archangels and angels and angel guides, things like that, Mm. you will automatically get to know God and uh, then we'll have that chat again. (laughs) So it's not just a case of turn up two hours, do a bit of homework. This is like a life change, isn't it? Yeah, it's setting you up, yeah, to keep you safe because that's the thing. And and also, I mean, I work in God's love and light and I'm very, very protected and so is my daughter and my home, but it never stops trying to get in, Mm. never stops trying to get in. So it's all so this is an ongoing thing, you know, for the rest mm. of your life, you know, being mindful mm. and keep yourself safe and your family safe. Yeah. So it's just basic information. Mm. Sounds perfect. You've got to get along to it then. Yep. And it's called spiritually awakened. So if anybody wants to sort of log on and do the course, that's what you type in. It's <laughs> Julie Evans. Right, so for those of you watching this on YouTube, we've just switched places because Julie is now going to do a demonstration about auras and picking up energies and see what she can actually pick up from myself. Um, I usually ground and protect myself. I obviously know what I'm doing. Um, Don't know if I have. I usually do it first thing in the morning, but Julie's just kind of tuning in, clearing her mind um, and connecting with the angels at the moment. So if you're watching this on YouTube, We may go quiet for a few minutes. If you're listening in, you might just want to fast forward out of this bit. I'll put some timestamps underneath for you. But just for the moment, we're just going to go quiet and let Julie do her stuff. Okay, just sit back and relax. Yeah, and cross your legs, okay? Okay. So I always, first off, keep reiterating who my source is. I choose to work in God's love and light only. God will send his archangel and his angels, and I go to my third eye and I will see them here. When I put my hands on and connect with Julie, that's when I'll start to receive the information. So, always make your source clear. I choose God's love and light only. Right, you're not suffering it at the moment, but they're alerting me that you do actually suffer with stress and anxiety. That is something that you deal with. Um, I'm also picking up with you. Right, they're taking me here to your chest area. Right now. Do you get acid reflux, Jules? Yes, I do. Because I've also got um, I've got the lovely colour green, which is Archangel Raphael, and I've also got the colour red, which is Archangel Uriel. Um, so that ta- that's telling me that your stomach, the acid in your stomach is causing the... the, the um, in your chest, so uh-huh. acid reflux, yeah? Yeah. See how this works? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Because I know the angels and what they stand for on a healing level and a life's level, that's how I know. Okay. Yeah. It's not rocket science. And we're not chosen ones. Everybody has the ability to do this. Mm. You know, God loves us all equally. Everyone can do this. Right, on a life level now, I'm getting as well uh, e- emotional heartache. Yeah. But yeah, they're alerting me to that and I would be able to help you with that. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. So 
very busy mind, haven't we? Yep. And you struggle to switch off, don't you? Uh, I know how to switch off. Yeah. But your mind's going constantly. Mm -hmm. Do you suffer with headaches, Joel? Never. I've got a lovely purple now, and that's Dad Kiel. Right. See if you can feel this. Did you feel that? I felt something. Did you feel like a pulling? Yeah, very kind of numb pulling. Like I, I knew there was something, but now it just feels like it's empty. Yeah, I'm saying it is. Yeah. Okay, so you actually felt that being pulled out. Yeah. Yeah. Power of God. You just pulled my brains out. <laughs> I've just calmed your mind down because mm -hmm. you get a bit. You get quite stressed. And um, so that's just calming your mind down and calming the stress in your mind. But also the purple is Archangel Zadkiel. So he deals with headaches or busy minds or negative thoughts, mm -hmm. mercy of forgiveness on a life level, you know, past things of the past and the mercy of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but he also links you to the divine. Okay. He's the one who carries your prayers or your thoughts to the divine. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very spiritual. You're very spiritual yourself, aren't you? You connect. Yeah. Don't know who or what I connect to. Let's have a look. Well, no, you've got a lovely positive, a lovely positive yellow coming in now. On healing level, that would tell me that you have allergies. Like, hey, it could be a fever or allergies. I'm also getting allergies to food, food related mm -hmm. allergies. But on a life level, it's about problem solving with a good effect, positivity. Yeah, solving things with a positive outcome, mm -hmm. which you also do. You're quite a positive person. And you give off that positive energy and you don't leave things. It's like you get things done. Do you know what I mean? If something's wrong or needs doing, you're the girl that gets it done and you always look for the positive resolve. You don't stop till you get the positive resolve. I agree, yes. Right. You haven't got any attachments or anything like that, but there is some stuff going on on this side here but I feel this is to do with the past that you still carry with here and now. Okay. All right, and that's all in your aura, yeah. So you can bring, you can bring stuff from past to the present. Past, as in past things in this life, or you, things that you've had uh, that's happened to you in your past. Okay, but in this life or previous life, it can be sometimes previous life. But I, mm. but that's that's where you go with your gut feeling, right? Okay, um, and that's also one of your gifts. Your gut's like the barometer of your truth. You pick things up through your stomach, don't mm. you? Yes, you know. Yeah. You get a feeling about something, it's usually right, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So that's it's the same sort of thing with that. And I feel mm. this is sort of things that, you know, that's got like past relationships and things that are still affecting the here and now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. And when you shut down, I always thank thank you, God, and thank you for sending up like the archangels and the angels and your help and your beautiful, overwhelming love in your love and light I choose only. Amen. Amen. So, Julie, that felt amazing. And I did definitely feel something when you pulled it out of the top of my head, whatever that was. But when your hands were around my head and my shoulders, I felt very settled and very grounded. The minute you moved your hands away from my head, I was it was like my head was tremoring from inside. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, it's an energy. It's, it's an archangel energy. Yeah. So do you need to know your archangels then to understand this or to... Yeah. To yeah, of course you do. Um, but this is this is part of the thing. Though. I mean, we were saying earlier, you know, I, I did um, two years with the Warwickshire Healers at Bedworth Church. And a lot of healers were working with colours. But they didn't know what they stood for. They just, like, you know, put their hands on and, and the colours appeared in the third eye. They didn't know that, that way they were actually archangels. 
Well, once you know your archangels and what they stand for on a healing level, then you can give information. But also, that's why I went to your head, because I saw purple. I went to your head. You said you didn't suffer with headaches, mm. but there's something going on in your head, like busy mind, stress head type mm. situation, which I just pulled out. But you felt the energy of that. Yeah. So by knowing that angel, I knew what I'd got to do with you. Mm. So I don't know if you know, I've got multiple sclerosis, and that is all to do with... Um, sorry, related to my head, let's say. That's where the scarring is. And... Would that be what you picked up then, or is this something else, a different energy? Well, here's the thing. We're not doctors. No, I know No, that. we can't yeah. diagnose and stuff like that. I just knew there was something, you know, that's Archangel's Adkiel's domain. Mm -hmm. um, I knew there was something with your head. I went to it. I just went with what I was told and what I was given. So they did, They. did. this is the thing. They do the magic. Yes. Yeah. But you know, they're the edit, they do the magic, we're just the vessel. Yeah, but this is not, and I can't repeat enough, this is not in place of a doctor or a specialist no. or consultant. No, 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 no. It always works alongside, you know, because doctors and nurses, they're healers. Mm. You know, they're what we call natural healers. And then, you know, we're the alternative. But it, it was always meant to work side by side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So is this something that you do on a one-to-one -one then, or could you do this over the internet for somebody? I'd probably be able to pick up, but um, the best effect really is it's more really, I would say, one-to-one -one because when you're putting on the earth, you're actually receiving the energy to heal. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I, I can't see that working. Over the, I mean, some people can do it, mm -hmm. but, you know, I say we all work differently and unfortunately that's not one of my gifts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hands-on gal. <laughs> <laughs> so is this something that you offer out to... Um, to people, you know, could people come to you for healing? Yeah, I get a lot of people coming for healing, but I also I do a lot of animal healing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, oh, God, that is that is my passion. Um, because, first off, they've not been, you know, downloaded. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? They, 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 all they've got is their senses. Mm -hmm. And when you're meeting, you know, a horse or a dog for the first time and you're putting your hands on, the dog doesn't know you, the horse don't know you. You're a stranger and the first thing they want to do is get away from you, you know? But when I connect, it's like they connect instantly and it, their senses tell them that that's good and they all stand still. They just stand still and they love it. They really, really absorb it and, and, and love it. And they sort of go into like this like dopey, half asleep type, relaxed state. It's just, some, it never ceases <laughs> to amaze me. And I suppose you get a better reaction or response, I should say, from animals rather than humans. Yeah, because they're not imprinted on. No one's told them, oh, that's a load of crap. And do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Mm. All they've got is their, their instincts, isn't it? Yeah. You know, so it's true. Mm. And it's like they go, oh, God, yeah, I like that. Oh, that feels good. As I said, you know, they, they're, they're always coming at you, mm. you know, trying to get wheedle their way back in. And especially with, with my house, I'm very conscious of my house. I'm always cleansing it, bringing the love and light in and stuff like that. So anyway, I've got a, a, a dog and he's a cockapoo and he is pitch black. Yeah, right, he's so black. So as I went up the stairs, he'd got there for Christmas, he'd got this like orange chicken toy thing, which he loves, right, squeaky thing. So... um. So I was going upstairs to the toilet and there's a pass and the light what landing light wasn't on. So as I passed my bedroom, which was dark, right, above my bed I could see this chicken thing levitating. And I thought, oh no, not again, not again. So I was running downstairs, gets me early water, gets me cross, runs in the bedroom to go and have a row with it, because I'm not scared anymore now. Show it no fear. Now I'm gonna have a row with it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've gone in there, all armed up, put the light on, and there's my dog sitting on the bed with a dog. <laughs> but because it was pitch black, it looked like it was elevating. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So sometimes if you, you need to look at the logic before you think it's spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing is, is I wasn't scared this time, you know, so it... I scare it now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd be scared if you came running at me with the oh, cross I did. I went, I went in with a row. I was armed with me cross and me only water. He was going to have it. You know, <laughs> bloody dog sitting there with chicken in his mouth. <laughs> oh, God, I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> End on a high note. Exactly. End on a high note. I don't think we should actually talk about anything else in this episode, um, podcast listeners and YouTubers, because it means that we can get Julie back again in the future. So... 
How can they get hold of you then? If they want to get hold of you, contact you, join your course, what's oh, the best okay. platform to contact you? Um, so if you join Earth Angels on Facebook, and there's lots of Earth Angels, but there's a picture of me holding a horse's head, sort of um, in healing mode, uh, and it's Julie Evans, Earth Angels, or you can Facebook me or DM me on uh, through Facebook. Mm. I'll put your links underneath this yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, please. Well. That'd be amazing. Yes, yes. Thank Great. you for having me. That's okay. It's been amazing. And thank you very much, Julie. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And look forward to seeing all of you in the next episode of Tech Talks and Soul Walks. God bless. <laughs>